talk to you briefly about the the takeaway lessons from the J. David Smith book. And I have a few of them listed up here on the board. I think in summary, some of the things that we can take away from this book that are really important for us are, first of all, the limitations that science has uh, on it. And uh, we can debate what these limitations are, but that there are limitations to the kind of knowledge that empiricism and rational processes provide is something that's at least a starting point for a debate and a conversation, defining what those limitations are. And I think the Minds Made Feeble story, that book, uh, J. David Smith makes it clear to us that, that there are limitations, he believes, on what science can and cannot do, what empirical processes can and can't accomplish, and what valid and reasonable uses of, of that process are. I think second of all, though, it reveals human shortcomings and that even the most brilliant scientists and researchers and intellectuals and thinkers of any given time period are subject to the flaws that all people are subject to. And so while science as a process may be this thing, we also have to deal with the fact that science is done or is conducted by human beings. And human beings are subject to those shortcomings and those failures. And I think Goddard and uh, his assistant, Kite, I think those uh, and some other people associated with the eugenics movement did have some human shortcomings that interfered with their work. I think thirdly, though, uh, it's important that we talk about um, some of the dangers of a governmentality that comes out of this story. And that's a term that comes from Michel Foucault. He's specifically referring to governmentality of the mind and governmentality of the body, what it means to be fully human. And in the Foucauldian sense, this story is a warning about these powerful kinds of structures that are invisible beneath the surface of human behavior and beneath and within the activity of science, academia, and social science research, uh, those things too, it's omnipresent. And Foucault would read this story and shake his head and say, this is a siren call, this is a warning, this is uh, something that we should pay attention to that is more evidence for this overarching governmentality of the mind or the body, and, or in fact both. I think, too, there's an, a lesson about objectivity and subjectivity. People have tended to oversimplify those terms and say that science is objective, whereas uh, some of the more qualitative kinds of experiences in the social sciences uh, are subjective and they're different kinds of truths. But I would like to suggest to you as my students that objectivity which science tries to claim for itself, and subjectivity are like disability and ability. They may be two sides of the same coin, and we may not be able to separate them dichotomously, as cleanly as some people would like us to in saying this is this and that is that. I think the Minds Made Feeble book, uh, another takeaway for me and for us is that uh, perhaps reveal something to us about human nature. I believe that it's perhaps in our makeup as humans to notice differences amongst ourselves. Richard Kearney, the philosopher that I have mentioned to you before, believes that we may be hardwired for this. This may be a survival mechanism, in fact, that we are designed to notice differences and we group and categorize ourselves and begin to make decisions about danger and about uh, selective advantage as a result of these differences. Uh, Kearney also adds, by the way, that even if we are hardwired that way, we have a moral and ethical obligation to question that process and what we can do to counteract it as humans. Finally, I think one of the takeaways from from this story is that the science, the social science of sociology, the field of sociology, has uh, come to take on a very important role in the world of 
social science and hard science, and that role is in part to have a kind of antenna that's up in the air seeking out signals about social justice. Um, it's not just about a moral and ethical decision-making mechanism for human behavior or how groups interact with each other.